Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a coffee break with Fadaz Ahmed. He's a researcher at Zhejiang University in China, and he's joining me today from Kashmir. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with cutting-edge insights on regional development and innovation. We ask researchers directly and in a personal manner about their work. We make scientific knowledge accessible to all. Fajas, thank you so much for accepting this invitation to have a coffee break with me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for hosting a discussion on alternative forms of innovations. Um, thanks to you. I'm having today a black coffee from Colombia. Which coffee are you having? Well, I'm having Lavaza Espresso. It's a blend of uh, African and uh, Brazilian coffee beans. Sounds delicious. Um, I want to talk with you today about the paper you wrote on the grassroots innovation. Could you please tell me what the paper was about? Uh, well, you know, of late, innovation studies have taken keen interest in exploring various components of informal sector innovations, while recognizing the immense contribution of this scholarship in sensitizing researchers in generating awareness, its, you know, uh, connection to the policymaking has remained inadequate. The diverse, idiosyncratic, and divergent, uh, nuanced view of informal sector innovation have not received the adequate attention. And what has happened as a result is, you know, the policymakers around the world, they have attempted to extrapolate the policies meant for formal sector innovations to see the requirements requirements of informal sector innovation. And in this paper, we try to put some of these policy formulation to critical scrutiny. I understand the key notion of your paper is uh, effectively grassroots innovations. Could you please give us a definition of this? Uh, well, grassroots innovations, in a very narrower sense, include all those undercurrent innovation activities and uh, movements which happen outside the gaze of the university spaces or the fortified, f uh, you know, f uh, firms. Uh, you know, it's it's a kind of uh, alternative pathway to sustainable development which happen organically, you know, without uh, the support from the formal sector firms or, or fortified research institutions. And which ones would you say are the main findings of your research? Uh, well, you know, we had a couple of questions in mind when we went to uh, do this kind of ethnographic research. Uh, research. It, was a, it was a decadal uh, ethnographic study. And some of the key findings of our, of our paper was, you know, uh, almost all innovators, you know, when we talk about the formal uh, knowledge appropriation mechanisms like intellectual property rights, which uh, policymakers talk about while scaling up these innovations, most of the innovators, they, uh, they you know, they, uh, they showed a near complete unfamiliarity about, about patents they don't know how to manage patents, they don't know how to actually use uh, various IPO forms. That was one of the major findings. And the second finding was, you know, uh, the uh, uncritical adoption of extrinsic forms of incentives actually crowds out the intrinsic motivation of the of, of, of innovations. And the third was, you know, these innovators, they actually wittingly try to delay the planned obsolescence and the use of recycling material is, is not uh, explicitly used to reduce the costs, but it's also used uh, as a great source of learning. Thank you for clarifying that. And uh, which one was your personal motivation in writing this paper? Uh, well, we have been following GI since 2007. It's almost a decadal ethnographic research. I think the debates about, uh, you know, inclusion, sustainability and equality were a great motivation for all of us. I believe if uh, these alternative forms of innovations are nurtured in a proper way, they will definitely offer us a glimmer of hope in creating a sustainable future. As is witnessed in the ongoing COVID crisis, you know, there have been various bottom-up collaborative innovation attempts which will help us, you know, democratize the elitist innovation models around the world. Ah, uh, that sounds fascinating. And uh, which ones would you say are the policy implications of your paper? Uh, you know, as I mentioned, informal economy is expanding around the world. Almost around two billion people work in for you know uh, in the informal uh, sector. Uh, we can our policymakers and we can collectively tap the innovative and creative potential of informal sector innovations, provided we adopted a bottom-up approach to study the nuanced characteristics of informal sector innovations. What we encourage is that you know instead of uh, top-down elitist model of policy formulation used to scale up such innovation, we require a bottom-up understanding of these innovations. And instead of you know commercializing this innovation at a mass scale, we uh, we believe that you know uh, um, a descaling innovation approach uh, is required to actually tap the potential of, uh, of of the innovations which exist in informal economy. Well, thank you. That was uh, great to know, Fadat. Thank you very much again for your time and for those uh, valuable insights. I wish you all the best uh, for your future research and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lorena. Thank you for watching. 
If you're interested in more details about this academic publication, you can find here the link below. Find us on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube, or listen to our podcast on Spotify. See you next time. Bye-bye.